In this video, we will be looking at writing ionic formulae. The key to writing ionic formulae is being able to write accurate chemical formulae. So, by uh, using whichever method you wish, you write the normal chemical formulae using valency. So, for the first example, the chemical formulae would be KCl, as potassium and chlorine each have a valency of 1. When you're writing ionic formulae, you must have a look at your elements. Metallic elements will become positive ions and non-metal elements will become negative ions. The actual charge will depend on the valency. For example, potassium has a valency of 1 and it is a metal, therefore its ionic formula is K+, whereas chlorine has a valency of 1 and is a non-metal, so will be Cl-. Minus. If we move on to have a look at lithium oxide, again write the formulae as you would using valency. So for this you will have Li2O and again you're having a look at what elements you have. So we have lithium, a metal, the valency of 1, so it will have a charge of 1 positive. However, we have two lithium ions here, so you must put brackets around the lithium and the two goes outside of the brackets. Oxygen, it's non-metal, it's in group 6, has a valency of 2, means that it gains two electrons when it forms an ionic compound, so it becomes O2-. So looking at aluminium sulphide, write the chemical formula using whichever method you're comfortable with. And you should end up with Al2S3. And it's the same process. Aluminium, it's a metal, so it'll become positively charged. However, it's in group 3, so it'll be a 3 positive. Having a look at how many we've got, we've got two aluminiums, brackets around aluminium, and a 2. For the sulfur, it's in group 6, like oxygen, so it becomes 2 minus. However, we have three of them, so again, brackets around the whole ion and three on the outside of the brackets. Looking now at things that involve group ions, here we have magnesium nitrate. So remember to use the table in your data book to find the formula for the nitrate part. And when you write out the chemical formula, you'll find you have MgNO3, 2. So Mg, metal, is in group 2, so you'll find it's 2 positive. And to get the charge of the nitrate, that's actually in the data book. It's written as NO3 minus. And as we have two of them, we need to put brackets around them, just as it is in the chemical formulae, to show that it's the whole part. And the final example looks at two group ions together. So we've got ammonium sulfate. So ammonium is NH4 and sulphate is SO4. So ammonium has a valency of 1 and sulphate a valency of 2. So again these ones you would take straight from your data book. They're written with the charges on them. You just have to copy them out. So if you look at the last example there you can see that the charges balance and they will do for all examples. You have NH4 and you've got two of them, 2 plus, SO4, 2 minus. They balance to give you a neutral compound. That's your final check to make sure you've written the correct ionic formulae.